play and call it work. Hey everybody, Matthew here from MiniWargaming.com and welcome to the next episode of How to Play Age of Sigmar 2nd Edition. The series where I teach you how to play Age of Sigmar. That's probably obvious from the title and the intro. Today we're talking about the Battleshock phase. This video will probably be a little shorter because uh, there's not a lot to it, but I want to make sure you understand every aspect of it, so we're going to have it just in one video. And as usual, there's going to be a battle report following this in the Mini Wargaming Vault at the link in the description below. And this battle report will definitely make sure that both sides have low bravery and lots of models in the unit so you can see how the battle shock phase will affect everybody around us. We're even going to talk a little bit about the command ability that is inspiring presence because it does come up a lot. We didn't talk about the command abilities in the other phases where it might come up because we're going to cover it in another video, but I feel that inspiring presence is an important thing to cover, so we're going to do it here. As always, a couple of things to remember. Make sure you subscribe and click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button on YouTube so that you are notified when we put up new videos, especially for this series. And if you want others to learn how to play Age of Sigmar, but you don't want to teach them, tell them to go to miniwargaming.com slash how to play AOS as an Age of Sigmar. It'll redirect into this series, and I'll teach them for you so you don't have to go through all that. Let's take a look at the Battleshock phase. In the Battleshock phase, both players are going to have to test to see if more of their models are going to flee the battle. The units that have to test for this are any units who have lost models previously in that same player turn. I want to emphasize it has to have happened during the player turn. It can be a combination of wizards casting spells on a unit, other guys shooting at the unit, and then close combat attacks, but it all has to be in the same player turn. So it doesn't carry over to the next turn. And if a unit has lost at least one model, they must take a Battleshock test. Now in some cases, there's really no point in doing it because there's no way for others to run, which we'll talk about in just a second. But it's still important for you to understand that they technically still have to make it. It'll just be impossible to fail it. A Battleshock test is really straightforward. You look at the unit that has lost their models. So we're going to get an example right here in just a second. You roll a die, you add the number of models that left, and if the result is higher than the bravery of the unit for which you are rolling, then they lose an additional model for every point by which they, they failed. If the unit has at least 10 or more models, then they actually get to add one to their bravery for every 10 models, full 10 models, that are in the unit when the test is taken. Now, I want to point out this does not increase their bravery. I've made the mistake in the past of, in other phases where the bravery is being used for maybe a spell or something, I've said, well, there's 20 of them, so they've got plus two bravery. That is not the case. The only time that the size of your unit decides how much your bravery is, is in the Battleshock phase, unless you have a special rule on your War Scroll that says otherwise. So here's our example. We've got five Liberators locked in combat with about 20 Chain Rasp Hordes. Let's say in the ensuing combat, and no other damage was done in the hero phase or shooting phase, that two of the Liberators were destroyed. So I'm just going to lie them down back here for reference. And that we lost six of our Chain Rasp Hordes. So we're going to lie them down back here just as reference. And that's it. Well, in the Battleshock phase, both the Liberators and the Chain Rasp Hordes are going to have to do a Battleshock test. And so let's start with the Liberators. And the, whoever's turn it is actually tests first. For the most part, this isn't going to matter, except that maybe you'll see what your opponent did before you roll and decide who dies as well. So let's look at the Liberator Primes, or the Liberator's War Scroll. You can see they have a bravery of six, which is a pretty decent bravery, even though the Chain Rasp Hordes are going to make it look small. Six is decent. It means, though, if you lose a model, you do have a chance of losing more. So I'll roll a die. Let's do it right here. I roll a four. I had two models that were lost, so I added it to the four, and it becomes a six. Now, that is not greater than my bravery, so they passed their Battleshock test. So that's considered a pass. If I had rolled a five, then one more model would have fleed. If I rolled a six, two more would have fled, because six plus two is eight, which is two greater than the unit. Let's say that I rolled a five, and so a total of seven, and seven is one higher than their bravery of six. 
And so one of the models must flee. It's up to me, the controlling player of the Liberators, which model flees. But remember, at the end of the turn, anybody who's not within an inch of their unit, you have to then start destroying models. So if I destroyed the one in the middle, for example, let's just do that. And I'll show you at the end how that's going to impact everything. So one more is slain. Now, I can just remove all these because they're not really on the battle anymore. And for all intents and purposes, they're considered slain. So if there's any special abilities that activate when a model is slain, that would still be activated right now. The Chain Rasp Horde, on their War Scroll, you see they have a Bravery of 6 as well, but down with the Dread Warden, we see that if a Dread Warden is there, they count as having Bravery 10 instead. A lot of the Undead units have a Bravery of 10 to represent how much they just don't care about being killed, which is why they're so high. But the Chain Rasp Hordes are a little different because they're a little more unruly and they will flee the battle if there is not a Dread Warden nearby. Luckily for the Night Haunt player, there is a Dread Warden right here, so they do have a Bravery of 10. So having lost six models, we would roll a die, we rolled a four, and we would add that six, and we'd get to ten, and so they did not fail it. And on top of that, because they still have 14 models left, they actually count as having a bravery of 11. Now let's say they did not have the Dread Warden, and their bravery was only six. Now in this case, there's still at least ten models, so their bravery would be seven. Remember, it's not eight, it's for every full ten models they get plus one. Then this 4 plus this 6 would be a 10, and their bravery is 7, so they would lose 3 more models. So let's just grab 3 from the back, take the ones that are there as well, and push them off to the side because they have fled, and they're no longer taking part in this battle. And that would then be the end of the Battleshock phase because both players have rolled for each of them. But there's, one more, there's two more things I want to talk about. First is split units. Now I've mentioned this a few times, but now we're at the part where it actually happens. Because after the Battleshock phase is over, the turn is over. And at the end of the turn, you must remove models from any units in your army that are split up into two or more groups that are not within an inch of each other until only one group remains. So the big mistake that I made right here, there's more than an inch between them. So this is more than one group. So I have to remove models until I've gone back to the normal rules. Now, that doesn't mean I have to remove the minimum number of models because let's say I had a group of, let's say I had a lot of liberators and there's these ones over here and him, they got split up. I could choose to remove these three so that he's left or I could choose to remove him so that they're left. Obviously, usually that means you'll want to remove him, but maybe he's closer to an objective or he's holding up a, an enemy hero that you really don't want to go after the other guys. There might be reasons why you would choose to do that. So in this case, I did not have those two. I want to keep my prime alive, so I'm just going to remove him. Now, I shouldn't have made that mistake because I had control, but there are some effects or some abilities where you might lose certain models from your unit and you don't have control over which model, and that could break them up, in which case the split of the units might occur outside of your control. The last thing I want to talk about is the command ability Inspiring Presence. Let's put a Knight of Shrouds right here. And we're in the same combat, and let's say that we've already rolled for the Liberator, he's by himself but we've still lost six of the Chain Rasp Hordes, and we don't have a Dread Warden to give them the nice bravery of 10. Well, in the Battleshock phase, one of the command abilities that any of your heroes can use is if they are within six inches of the unit that has to take the Battleshock test, or if they're within 12 inches if they're, they're your general, that they can spend a command point, use Inspiring Presence, and that unit automatically passes their Battleshock test so they do not have to roll. So they still count as having taken the Battleshock test and passed it, they just don't have to roll it. This is particularly useful. Let's say that Chain Rasp Horde was 30 strong and I had just destroyed 20 of them. Well, most likely, whatever I roll, the rest of them are going to run. Even with a bravery of 10, that I'm still gonna, just a minimum of uh, another 14 are going to run when I roll that D6. Even if I roll a one, 21. Actually, no, it's a minimum of 11 that would actually run. And since you know that the rest are going to run and be destroyed, it might be worth that command point to keep them there, if you care about them enough. But this will come up quite often that you'll want to use it. There's other command abilities that act like Inspiring Presence, so just make sure that you are aware of the command abilities that all of your heroes have. And that is the Battleshock phase. It's straightforward enough, but you have to make sure you do it right. Make sure you're getting the extra bravery if your unit's at least 10 strong. Make sure you're rolling it correct. Make sure you're looking at the right bravery and make sure you take your Battleshock test and don't forget about Inspiring Presence. To help you see how this works and the dramatic impact it can have, 
we've made sure that the battle report for today features armies that have large units with low bravery. That way, any, any injuries that they do take, they will need to take their battle shock for the most part. There's always going to be some exceptions to that, of course. So make sure you go and check out that battle report right now. It's in the Mini Wargaming Vault. If you're not a Vault member, click it. Get a seven-day trial. By this point, if you're still not a Vault member, you get it. Get instant access to all the battle reports that you haven't watched yet for this entire series. Help support us so we can make more of these. Let us know as well in the comments section what troubles you're coming across and what you'd like to learn, what more advanced tutorials you'd like me to do for how to play Age of Sigmar. And don't forget, if you have a friend who wants to learn, but you don't want to teach them, tell them to go to miniwargaming.com slash how to play AOS as an Age of Sigmar. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Wargaming.